Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. My name is Dee. Today we are checking out a modified version of the familiar Oculus Tuscany demo. If you're not familiar with it, it's just uh, a small house and yard that you can walk around in. And it ships with the um, Oculus SDK. It's one of the basic demos that they provide. And this has been modified to add audio sources to it that use bin oral audio uh, using the RealSpace 3D audio engine. Now, uh, bin oral audio is um, it produces different sounds in your left and right ear that uh, have been modified so that you can actually tell in what direction a sound is coming from, whether it's coming from in front of you, to the left, to the right, whether it's above you, whether it's below you. And they can do this with an incredible amount of accuracy that you can just stand in one place and hear exactly in what direction and what distance the sound is coming from. So this is going to be pretty cool to check out. Oculus has actually licensed the RealSpace 3D audio technology for applications that are going to be shipping on the consumer Oculus Rift. So this is going to be a great taste of what's to come in terms of the potential for audio on, on the Oculus Rift platform. And um, I, I think it's an essential ingredient in any kind of virtual experience to, to have that really compelling 3D audio that feels like it's in the space with you and not just playing as you're walking through the space. So without further ado, um, so before I jump in, I want to note that the version of the RealSpace 3D audio demo I'm using here is actually modified by Fruxius, who is the developer of Sightline and Sightline the Chair, um, as well as some other things like VR Comenius. And um, he, he added some awesome stuff. He changed out the music so that YouTube does not flag me. Thank you. And he also added some platforms so that we can kind of move around the sound source a little bit more. And he added a fun feature that I will show you once we're inside. It's a surprise. Let's go. All right, here we are in the familiar Tuscany demo. I'm just going to use my keyboard and mouse to control normal WASD controls. You can start to hear the music playing. Um, the fountain is flashing red. That means that it is an audio source. And if we walk up close to it, we can hear it. But the real audio source I really want to focus on is inside the house. So let's get in there and take a look at it. I have my audio turned up all the way in my earphones. And there it is. That's the audio source. It's a big speaker that they just stuck right here floating in the middle of the air. And you can see right away that if I stand like here, I can hear that it's behind and above me. If you're wearing earphones when you watch this video, you will be able to hear it as well. If I turn like this, I hear it on my left. If I turn to face it, I can hear it directly in front of me. And it all just works. The fire is also a directional audio source. If I walk up the staircase, I hear it getting closer and coming up on my right. I like walking right up to it. I'm shouting now because this is a really loud speaker. I'm actually, when I walk up to it like that, I actually think of it as being like a real speaker because it really has that same kind of feeling to it, like it's really like blasting right in my face. And it actually works with the positional tracking, I believe. So if I'm very near the source and I lean closer, it gets louder. So that is very, very cool. If I walk up here towards the balcony, it starts to get quieter as I walk away. I can hear it behind me. Now I can hear it's over there. If I walk out here, it sounds like the music's coming from the balcony over there. That's because there's reverberation. It's coming out of the window here and kind of bouncing off over there. I'm not sure how I feel about this. I don't feel like it's super realistic. They could, they could definitely work on that part. But the directional component, just being able to tell where it is, actually works really well. I love how I can hear it like on my right as I walk down the stairs, turn to face it. It's in front of me. Turn to the left and I hear it behind me. That all just works completely fluidly. And let's go ahead and get on these moving platforms and we can hear it from some other angles. These platforms, I believe, were added by Fruxius. So if I just look straight ahead as I go up and down, 
You can hear it changing its vertical position on the fly. It definitely sounds now like it's coming from below me. Um, it's The effect is not, like when it's above you, it's very clearly above you. When it's below you, it's not quite as obvious. But it still definitely sounds below. I think it's because for a sound source below you, they really have to model um, the passage of the sound through your through your body, through your torso, um, and and that might be a harder part for them to model. Whereas when it's coming from above, it's not really passing through very much of your body. So let's put it right above me now. The sound source is directly above me now. And it really sounds directly above me. They did a great job with that. All right. Uh, if you're wondering, these weird looking things, this is another thing Fruxy has added. These are the black holes. They're kind of terrifying. They like, uh, they're distorting the whole environment. If you walk up super close to them, they, they totally, ah, ah. Whoa, okay. I, I don't like touching those. They make me very uncomfortable. I'm going to change up the music now. Going to hit F12. We're changing to another track. This one's instrumental. Kind of the sort of music you might hear in a video game when you're going out to battle. Can I jump on top of it? Let's see. Woo, I'm on top. I'm on the speaker. All right, let's get down. Okay, now I'm going to tell you about that secret feature I was talking about. This is another thing added by Fruxius. If I stand still and press the Z key, let me press it one more time. There we go. So you'll see, I can't see anything. I just see colors. Okay, it's not quite working, but if I turn my head this way, I can hear the sound is right in front of me. And if I press X, it will unhide my view so I can see I'm looking directly at the speaker. So this is kind of a game of locate the sound source just based on the binaural audio. So I'll press it again, press my Z key. Okay, it sounds like it's on the left and up. I'm not sure why my vision's flashing red. I think that's something to do with the fire. Okay, the sound stopped now. I can't tell where it is. Start again, sound. I'm waiting on you. There it is. Okay, I hear it right in front of me and above me. And there it is, yes. Okay, let's press it one more time. Okay, now it sounds like it's right above me. Yeah, there you are. Nice. Okay, I'm going to press Z one more time. Okay, where are you now? Okay, you're... Are you... It's here. It's here. Yep. Got it again. All right. Okay, where is it now? Okay, I think it's above me again. Yep. Okay, where is it now? Yep, I got it again. I, it's above me, but I'm on the other side of it now. Okay, I got tricked that time because I'm actually outside the house and it's passing through the window. So I looked up at the window where it's coming out of. I keep going to that spot. Okay, this time it sounds like it's not above me. I believe it's in front of me. Yep. I'm doing good at this game. I'll definitely have to see if Fruxius can put this build up because I really like this audio location game. It really shows off the technology really well. And it's actually fun to do just to see if I can turn my head towards the, the audio location and consistently get it every single time. Let me try it a few more times. Okay, I did this spot already.
Okay, I looked a little bit too high that time. I see you. There you are. I did it. I'm on the staircase this time. This is a new spot. Yep, I got it again. Okay, where am I now? Ah! Okay, I'm not anywhere near the sound source. I've never been out here. I can't get here normally in Tuscany. I didn't know I could walk around out here. These houses are much less interesting than the house that you start with. They're just painted on. I didn't know they were so big, though. These are actually, like, house-sized. And there's a big farm over there. These trees are much simpler over here. I think they're just like a single quad with a texture because they're far away. This is pretty neat. All right, all right, let's get back. Wait, is that the house over there? Yeah, that's the house. All right, let's get back. Okay, I hear it. Over here? Okay, it's bouncing off the, the tree, I guess because it's coming out the window again. This part doesn't work very well. I'm not, it sounds like it's kind of bouncing off this wall over here, but I don't know why it would be doing that. Is it like coming out and bouncing off the ground? I don't know, I don't get it. Whatever. So there are some things that work really well, like the audio location, as you can see. I'm looking in the window again. So you can see I can pretty consistently locate it. Um, but the, it's not so great when I'm outside and I'm hearing it pass through the windows. That part could do some work. Um, it's also not so great with occlusion. Like if I stand on the other side of a wall, if there's something between me and the speaker, I don't really get a strong sense that there is something solid between me and the speaker that's like muffling it. It does it a little bit, but it's not very convincing. That's uh, called audio occlusion. Um, and I definitely think that's one area they could improve. But overall, I'm very happy with the sound location. I think it will add a lot. I think it will add a lot to the experience of virtual reality games when you feel like you're, there's an object in your environment that's really producing sound. Like, I don't feel like I'm listening to this music on headphones. That's not what I feel like. I feel like there is a speaker here, and the speaker is playing the music. And I actually feel like the speaker is playing the music very loudly, which is weird because, you know, in reality, it's playing at this really low volume on my headphones. Like, like if this were, like, my neighbor's house, I would, like, be coming over here and telling my neighbor, hey, turn down that giant speaker. I'm trying to sleep over here. It is, it is pretty cool. Pretty cool. So yeah, that is Real Space 3D Audio. Like I said, it's been licensed by Oculus. It is not yet clear exactly what they are going to do with their license for the technology, whether they're going to just use it for their first party applications, whether they're going to make it available as some kind of, um, as part of their software development kit or part of their Unity plugin. I don't know what they're gonna do with it, but um, but it's very exciting that we're going to have access to this and we're going to be able to have clearly located sound sources in our environments and that, and, and that we'll be able to do things. Like the first time I played this demo, the coolest thing for me was just walking in that front door and hearing that sound source and just looking directly at it. And then only after I looked at it did I realize I didn't have to be told where that sound source is. It never had to say, look up, there's a sound source, there's a speaker up there. I just knew. I just knew the moment I walked in the door that it was right there. And you can use that, I think, the great effect in all sorts of games, in horror games, in adventure games. Just walk in a room and hear a sound from a particular direction draws your attention immediately in that direction. It's a great way of directing attention where you want it. Because, um, I mean, one of the big disadvantages of VR as compared to traditional static media like uh, film has been that it's it's very like in film like the camera goes where you point the camera you have full directorial control over that uh, but in a in a in a VR film experience or an on rails experience the user has to retain control of their head at all times otherwise they will feel sick and 
one way that you can, uh, and that means you have to develop a lot of mechanisms for drawing their attention or driving their attention in certain directions at certain times. And this is one of the simplest and most effective ways to do it. You just make a very, uh, very particular, very striking sound source in a particular direction, and they will tend to look directly at it. Anyway, uh, that is all I have to say about 3D audio today, but I will definitely do more of this when we start to see it used in some, in some new applications. I will be happy to revisit Real Space 3D audio. Let me know your thoughts about it. If you watched this video with headphones, let me know what you thought of it, and if you found it to be convincing, how you would compare it to other technologies that you've encountered in, in other video games. And that's all for today. Everybody have a great every day. <laughs>